Welcome listeners to the first ever episode that I will be doing discussing music, reviewing albums, talking about all things instrumentation, live performance, mastering, mixing, recording, so on and so forth. I am excited to talk to you today about a dear friend of mine who is putting out an album soon with a boyfriend of hers and uh, I would say great partner in life because of the music that they're creating together is absolutely wonderful. Uh, I cannot wait till this album comes out and you guys are able to hear it because you're gonna love it. This person you all may know, uh, she is famous by most of our standards. Um, unfortunately, I hate referring to her fame being uh, raised because of this, uh, because to be honest, she deserves to be famous for her talent, not because of her luck of being drawn on a TV show, but she was actually a contestant on season two of The Voice. Three of the four judges wanted her on their team and she competed and uh, successfully pushed her way through uh, a large portion of the season, garnering tons of fans, tons of votes per episode, and just an overall impressive amount of growth in her vocal capabilities and her song composition skills as this album definitely proves. I've been lucky enough to actually get to know her personally, talk to her one-on-one, -on -one, discuss music, and she has um, confidently shared this album with me. Uh, she sent this link to me a couple of days ago, and I feel honored that I'm able to listen to it before it's released to the public, and I cannot wait to discuss it with you guys. I just need to make sure that I do it in a way that doesn't give anything away, because I want you guys to make a uh, decision on your own how much you like it, how much you dislike it, and uh, to be quite honest, I'm pretty sure you guys are going to love it, but uh, I don't want to influence your opinions too much, so I'm not going to give anything away as far as the details of the album, and uh, it should be out shortly so you guys can get a taste of it for yourself. Lindsay Paveo has been uh, starting this new band, uh, I guess musical project is what I wanted to call it, but uh, she actually has a couple of other musicians um, show up for their live performances and recording sessions, and uh, I'll get into that a little bit later, but this project is called Trophy, and it is a few months, uh, possibly a year into the making now, and everything that I've heard from it has been wonderful. Um, there's actually a song already out on YouTube, um, kind of a teaser for the album, and it's one of the best songs on the album, in my opinion. It's called Imiote. Uh, I'm gonna go with Imiote. Um, Lindsay, please correct my pronunciation on this one. You can actually listen to a little bit of it here, and I'm actually gonna post the link below, as well as in the annotation right next to my head. So click that if you wanna listen to it, um, and definitely check it out, at least after listening to this video. You're gonna love it. So, Trophy actually sounds a lot like Radiohead, and I know that this has been a really strong influence for Lindsay, um, and that's a great thing, because Radiohead is one of the most influential bands of my generation. They have been around for quite some time, and their music is extremely eclectic and highbrow, I guess. It is definitely for a... Uh, a professional listener, if you will. Radiohead is the musician's musicians. Um, this band experiments a lot with complexities in sound and rhythm and time signatures. Um, even lyrics are definitely comparable to most mainstream music, and I would say that all of those elements translated really well into Lindsay and Richie's music for Trophy. The music that they write is music theorily complex. It changes time signatures frequently. Um, different parts come in and out at different times. There's no set phrasing that is repetitive, and that's the easy way out for music writing. They really explore sounds with every instrument and voice that they use on this album, and you can tell that this composition style comes from a background of experience, and a genuine love for the art of music. These guys are uh, professionals by every sense of the word, professional musicians. I haven't seen them live yet, but their recorded abilities are off the charts. There's a track on the album, like I had just mentioned about time signature changes, 
this track actually alternates between two, two time signatures every phrase. And alternating between these time signatures, I guess, essentially makes it an 11-4 time signature, um, but it does so in a way that allows you to continue bobbing your head to it, feeling the groove, catching the downbeat, but recognizing that there's something definitely musically complex about this song, and it does not let your attention go. You are going to be very focused on well this entire album because of the complexities that they have within their music. I mentioned earlier the timing of the instrumentation and each instrument in almost every song has a very unique timing that they come in and go out of. It is very feel based and I'm quite impressed that they intend to play a lot of these songs live because of how uh, complex the timing is on a lot of the instrumentation. The tonality overall of the entire album is absolutely dreamy. They have declared themselves as dream pop, um, a genre of which that I am not too familiar with by title, but the sound, like I said, is close enough to Radiohead that if you wanted to consider Radiohead dream pop as well, it seems appropriate. Now, if we break it down dream and pop, the pop comes in definitely because of the tones that they use. Definitely danceable, they actually have a strong downbeat and a very catchy uh, rhythm to it. A lot of the drum sounds are electronic, but they've definitely got an acoustic drummer um, performing with them. So you get a lot of the humanistic feel mixed in with a lot of the electronic feel, and that's a beautiful juxtaposition of the two different you know, musical worlds that we're diving into this era. My only negative critique for this album, to be honest, is if you're going to listen to the album from beginning to end, as I normally do, at times it doesn't give us enough silence to really digest the sounds that we've just listened to. If you were able to uh, say that silence is the canvas on which music is painted, there isn't any canvas really for us left to see. And with that being said, it's still not that big of a bad you know, bad critique, because it being so full and busy, like I said many times in this review, keeps our attention and shows the detail and the effort put into this album. So to be honest, you need to follow Trophy on Facebook. Um, you got to get prepared for their album release because this album is something that you, uh, especially those of you who are fans of Radiohead, who are fans of the dream pop genre, you got to get your hands on this album and you're going to find something in it that you absolutely love and you musicians are going to find something that you're inspired by. Yeah.